All right, so by creating outlines in the last video, I was able to make melting pretty much exactly what I want. And it's an editable vector now, so I can still work with it. So for instance, if I don't think it looks so good right here, like these edges are a little strange, I can just redraw them with the pencil tool. And I've set the pencil to be uh, more smooth. Because it's melting, it would make sense for everything to kind of go vertical. Maybe I want it a little bit more accurate than that. It's tricky. And I can do little things like drawing drips if I wanted to. Though so you're not trying to turn your, your type into an illustration on its own. Right? To me, type already is so strong a focal point that you don't want to overdo it. Otherwise, it will overshadow your illustration. But I like that kind of drippiness there. Can soften it here a little bit more. And you guys get to decide what looks best. <laughs> All right. So also, it makes you by creating outlines, it makes you makes you look really closely at the text that you chose, and it is a good idea to just kind of customize it fully. This is the difference between just a typeface and a logo type, something that's really considered. Like your logo, you're really playing with the edges and the spacing. And you want it to read the way you, that's really clear. So again, your typeface was just a start. I'm basically going to get rid of all the really hard edges and soften them slightly. So it's more suggestive of bones of candles dripping, of things that fit with the type that I want. And it just gives me a lot of practice, it gives you a lot of practice with that pencil tool or with the pen tool. But you'll see, it's really actually kind of amazing, especially in these free fonts, how many little errors there are, like that little jog in the L. And it's because they're, they're just using very few anchor points. And sometimes they don't notice what, what that does to it. But here we're turning the typeface by creating outlines into artwork, into cutouts. So don't just settle for what the default is. Hardest thing about that pencil tool is starting on the path and ending on the path. And the thing that made the T a little bit too religious looking is that serif at the top. So I'm going to get rid of that. And again, if you overdo it, you can always use the smooth tool to get it back to something that looks leaner and more professional. You can even use the smooth tool to round out edges without having to redraw so much. So 
So you look at all those sharp edges in the in. They just need to be, just because there's very few anchor points, so they just need to be uh, given a little attention. Now I tend to prefer, just as a matter of taste, more hand-done type treatments. But all the same things apply if you have something that's really angular and really clean. Oh, that's a beautiful line, but I didn't start on the path. So before I go too much further with this, I'm going to look at a different option and just show you how you might do that. And so what if I didn't want kind of the melting macabre to look funky, kind of like the My Little Pony logo looks? What if I wanted to contrast these two more? So let me save that. And I found some inspiration. This is on Behance, that site I recommended for looking at digital artists and seeing their process. So this was for an album cover for a band called Suave Macabre. <laughs> okay. And he also showed this process video. And it shows you all the steps that we just went through, right? Except that he's doing the type design at the same time as he's doing the illustration. So he starts with the sketch. I actually really like the energy of the sketch. And then he replaces it with a typeface. And then he chooses Suave his colors. Macabre. And you get to the end, right? So you see how the flat color goes to, to do a tone. And that way it looks kind of like neon lights. That's the name of the, I don't know if it's the band or the album. So what if I wanted an approach like that? Well, then I would simply go back to Illustrator, lock and turn off my other solutions, right? And go to my text assets. And this is why, remember, I didn't delete my text layer. So I can take this, and it's still an editable type tool, and I can just try something that looks a little cleaner and italicized this time, nice and blocky. Something bold. Now this is why I tend to uh, just collect lots and lots of typefaces, because it's hard to just scroll through and find one. And of course, artists have their favorites. I like Insana Burger. It's pretty nice. I'll do Insana Burger with cheese. All right. So it's bold. It's clean. It has an uppercase I, <laughs> but you see how the uh, the different spacing that I use for the other one doesn't quite work for this. So let's make them all the, at least all in the middle, let's make them all the same font size. And then the cleaner text design will usually do a better job with kerning as well. I actually kind of like how the L's hooking into the T, but this E needs a little bit more space around it because the E takes up so much space. The I could do with a little less space around it. Maybe a little more. Okay. And then how can I make it all italic? Well, I can see if that is a, a font choice. It is not. In Illustrator, I could just use the type tools, or in Photoshop, I can just use the type tools in Photoshop to make it italic. 
I don't know if they have that. I've never been able to find that in Illustrator because all these things are slightly different. But I can use the transform feature here and play with what's called shearing. So on the x-axis, let me just push that up to 290 point. See what that does. And then on the width, let's go for 430. So I'm trying to push and pull it. And then here I can sh use these tilts, but I want it to go the other way. Ah, there we go. And you can really actually, it's just a different interface and it's not quite as easy to use, but you have even more control of just simple italicizing. Okay, and now if I want that same solution for macabre, because I think these match pretty well, I'm going to hit Command, C to copy it, make a new layer, bring it in, lock the other, and then paste in place. And then use the text tool, transform it. I think I did 30. No, nope, that's too much. There we go. And now let's try it again. And it's all capitals, even it's lowercase is capitals. So the kerning works pretty well, but the A needs a little less space around it because it doesn't take up as much of the water in the glass. The C takes up a lot. The B takes up a lot. So those need a little bit more space around them. The R takes up a lot. Let's give it a little bit more space. Excuse me. All right, and let's turn off. And let's see. So that's a very different approach than this. All right. And once you understand the type tools, it's not hard to, to try different things. I like how, how cleanly this is um, scaled. So it is a little weird that it lines up here, but doesn't line up there. Little things will bug you. So that's why I have these on separate layers. Now I can just take this whole text tool and use the large selection tool to scale it down. But I'm going to hold down Option and Shift, and I'm going to tuck it in. So that looks a little cleaner. And then maybe I don't want this M to be so large. So I go back to the type tool. These are 78.7. So I'm going to make this maybe just 80. Or maybe 78.7. Not 8,000. Whoops. So they all match, right? And then I can move it again. Ooh, I kind of like that the M here might come out of the of the empty space there. So all these little games you can play. And then what if I want just more space overall? Well, I can select the whole thing and then just do option and spread it out. 